Hey everyone, so for the past few weeks we've been really focusing on the markets here through more of a near-term lens, looking at where the opportunities and risks are. But I wanted to take a, some, a few minutes here uh, in, in early uh, 2021, really it's the midpoint of January 2021, and look at some of the, uh, the concerns. This is straight off of our latest research deck. Um, and look at some of the risks that we see that could potentially percolate towards the back half of 2021, maybe even going into 2022. And um, just to give you a time frame on this, we remain a little bit concerned about the markets. You're very, very near term here in the mid part of January, but we remain quite constructive through the first quarter, likely into the second quarter of 2021. But it's really beyond that point, the back half, maybe the last quarter or so and then going into 2022 where we see a lot of things that could really start get becoming of great concern so um, in order to show you this I have five simple charts and uh, the first two charts are a bit more focusing on a sort of uh, sort of fundamentals and and then sort of psychology and then the other three charts are going to be comparing two asset classes versus each other uh, in each one of those three charts. So let's start it with the first one. The first one is looking at a, what's called a, a price to sales ratio. Essentially what you're doing here is you, you're taking, in this case, the S&P 500 and dividing it by all the sales of all the companies. And you can see that even though we had a pretty lofty price to sales ratio in the year in 1999 and in 2018, uh, we're now above that. And, you know, again, I don't think this matters right here, right now. I do with I do think it's going to matter in a big way as we start getting out of the reopening trade that everyone's now uh, buying stocks for, which of course does make sense uh, in terms of the near-term uh, uh, anxiety there. The other thing is really one more of psychology, and, and I think some of you may have seen this before. There's a lot of call buying taking place. People are essentially relentlessly buying upside calls, uh, retail community, record amount of call volume. Um, and usually empirically, once that has run its, once you get to these kind of extremes, the movie is probably going to be over. So um, this can continue for some time. And again, we wouldn't be surprised if this continues right through the spring. But we do think ultimately this is going to come home to roost. And if you just go to the bottom chart here, which I will include as part chart number two within this five uh, uh, chart uh, deck. Uh, is the price uh, put to call ratio and you can see the put to call ratio recently went back down to where it was in the year 2000 of course we know what happened in the year 2000 in a bubble burst the next three charts which i think are quite frankly probably even more interesting is where we're going to compare uh, in each one of these charts we can compare two different assets so in this particular case we're going to look at first is the ratio of value stocks by divided by growth stocks. And again, I don't think this matters right now. I do think it's going to matter at some point. Again, maybe this second half of 2021 or going into 2022. The timing is always really difficult to make on these longer dated calls, but that's but this is one thing to look at. So from a purely technical perspective or visual perspective, really is what I'm trying to show you. You can see that value stocks have dramatically underperformed growth stocks. So this is the relative underperformance, i.e. outperformance by growth stocks. Uh, but you can see that we, over the past, I'm going to say, six months or so, we've had a bottom building phase take place where growth stocks are starting to underperform value and i.e. value outperforming growth. If you look at this through the lens of a uh, another asset series, so this would basically be bearish the broader S&P 500. Uh, particularly the growth or growthier areas of the markets, stuff that's really worked so well for the past 10 years. Another ratio that I think is really, really important is by taking emerging market stocks and dividing them by the S&P 500. Now, again, you might be asking, Serge, why the hell do I care? Well, you should care because if you look at this, I'm going to make this a logarithmic chart because it shows it even clearer. We've had a dramatic underperformance of emerging markets versus the S&P 500 for the better part of the past 10 years, and we think that's about to change. In fact, you can see the same pattern here that I just showed you on the value stocks divided by growth stocks. And again, this would be bearish, basically, the S&P 500 uh, and bullish emerging markets in relative terms. And the third chart is 
uh, one where we are going to uh, compare gold by the NASDAQ 100. And again, not surprisingly, gold has dramatically underperformed the NASDAQ 100 for the better part of the past 10 years. Interestingly, uh, very different from the previous two charts I showed you, the two ratio charts, gold has not yet started to base in terms of relative strength versus the NASDAQ 100. I do think that's going to take place here over the next few months. We haven't seen it yet, but again, uh, this is something we're looking at closely. So very simply, what we're like likely look, looking to do to transition into maybe starting into the second quarter of, of this year and then beyond um, is to be long gold in relative terms, long emerging markets in relative terms versus the S&P, um, and long value stocks relative to growth stocks. Now, parts of this stuff can already be done now. It's not like there's going to be one day we wake up and say, now is the day to do all this because this usually happens slowly and then it all comes at once. But I hope it's been uh, helpful to show you some some perspective and, and shed some light on you know, what we think are going to be uh, some really, really uh, amazing money-making opportunities as we as we start to unwind or get out of the reopening trade again right now here in, in the first uh, quarter or two of 2021 i still expect the reopening trade to work very well where people are excited about things coming back online as we hopefully all put covid past at some point um and so uh, but i think at some point that will run its course uh, and then we're going to be in a situation where uh, i think reality will kick in and some of these valuation metrics, some of the, the the just dramatically overbought and frenzies and all the kinds of things we're seeing are going to probably burst. Um, this is not to be scary. This is not to be a, a fear monger. I'm just sharing with you what our latest research is. So I hope it's been of, of some value. If you have any questions or comments, uh, let us know. And um, we'll see you again soon.